Garage Mikey. We're going to talk about putting together a cigar. What I have here is my piece of shiny tile. <clears throat> Cheap piece of tile, $2.50. I think I got it from uh, Home Depot, one piece, probably in the scrap pile, I don't know, but it's slick. It doesn't have any texture, okay? So that lets us put our leaf out and uh, move it around without it getting caught much, because when you use wood, there's splinters and whatnot. And uh, basic tools here, I've got a Chevetta. It's uh, a fancy one. I've also have one of the original kind, but I haven't sharpened it yet to use, so I use this nice little Chevetta here. We have a Chevetta, we have a pair of scissors. Scissors are important, and I'll show you why. And then I've got my glue, which is just uh, fruit pectin. Put some hot water, about a quarter inch in there, put about a teaspoon of pectin, stir it up, let it set up, and uh, it's, uh, movable but it's a little bit solid, a little bit wet at the same time. Problem is in a humid environment when you put a cap on this it'll grow mold after a couple of days so the best thing to do is only make enough you're going to use for the this you know today and tomorrow whatever. Also got my uh, uh, demineralized squirt water. I clean my board off with it. I also miss my um, tobacco with it if it's too dry. So uh, what I have here is uh, this is some um, binder leaf I'm going to use on making this cigar, and it, as you can see as I'm handling it, it's got a nice supple texture to it. I'm being real careful not to pull those edges out too far or too tight right now. And on this side, you can see there's two different colors. It's a little bit lighter colored here, a little bit shinier, dark, darker here. So this is the top of the leaf that faces the sun, and this is the back of the leaf, all right? I usually do my cutting from the back because the vein is a little more obvious that I want to cut along. If you're going to use a pizza cutter or a pair of scissors, you know, you're going to use that vein as your guide. So this last little bit here where it came, came off the main stalk of the plant is really unusable. So I come up here where I've got maybe a couple inches and I just cut that off like that so that's out of the way. <clears throat> Again, this leaf is pretty good for binder right now. could be maybe a tad more moist, but I'm not worried about that. It's not going to tear as I uh, wrap it up. So now I want to cut. I got two two binders here, right one side, left side, right side, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to come in here. I don't have to be too careful, but I'm just going to cut along this vein. So there's one binder, and cut along the vein on this side. I push it out there so it's not all wrinkled up find these center veins sometimes kink up when the leaves are particularly big. Sorry, I got a bug crawling on my neck. Um, better not be that on my shirt. Let me get rid of that stem. By the way, the stem is where a lot of the um, nicotine is located, so you don't want to put the big stems in there. So I've got two halves. I want you to notice something. I'm still on the back side of this because I do have that bug still on me. Hold on. Okay, he's gone. Uh, when I roll, it doesn't matter which side you roll from. I mean, if you use the back side as your start or the front side, because it's a binder, it's going to be under the wrapper. But just for looks, I like starting on the back side so it's the shiny side that's showing as I'm rolling this way. And you'll notice that uh, you've got veins. You can see those veins running at an angle, right? So when you want to roll your cigar, you want to roll so that those veins are actually lining up with the length of the cigar, not going around it like a barber pole. So to do that, you want the veins so that they go from, if, if you're going to roll this, if you're going to roll this so that the cut edge, the, the stem edge is on the inside of the roll, and this will be the outside of the roll, then you want these veins to line up low to high from right to left, from right low, left high. If I'm rolling, if I'm going to start the cigar over here and roll like this. Now, if I can roll the other way, which is starting here and roll like this, and I can use this other side because it's already aligned for that. If you can see, the veins run high from right, low to left. So I'm going to roll my cigar this way. I'll explain that again in a little bit. So anyways, that's the binder. Now in this uh, blend, I found a pretty neat little junk tobacco. I say that because uh, the supplier, uh, Total Leaf, 
It was leaf only. I can't remember. Uh, leaf only. Anyways, they had some Brazilian wrapper, uh, and it wasn't very good. I got some, and I told them I couldn't use it, so they sent me something else. But I kept what I had, and I used it in a cigar, and it's very tasty. Nice, strong tobacco. So I bought some for filler. So that's this product right here. You can see that uh, it's not very big to use for wrapper or binder unless you're making a smaller cigar and as binder goes it'll have some holes and some tears that's not a problem for a binder all right but I'm gonna use it for filler because I got my binder over here so I'm gonna use that Brazilian this is a Viso then I've got a Nicaraguan Seiko from the Jalapa region it's nice and supple you know it's not too wet in fact it's smokable right out of the pack without it being you know it's not crunt crumbly so I go a little backwards here, because normally you start with the Viso, which is a little thicker than the Seiko. So when you're booking, you're going to lay tobacco out flat and in order from outside to inside. So you would do Viso, Seiko, uh, Lajero. But in this case, because this wraps really nice and holds my bunch together, I'm going to use it first. So what I do is I lay this out so that I get kind of a rectangle. I might use two or three pieces to try to match them up for size. Or what I'm trying to do. So this one's a little thin, but that's all right. I, I point them towards each other like that. You see the pointy ends towards each other? And then I overlap the points only. And I get this kind of a long rectangle because I'm going to be rolling this way. And I don't want anything bowing out this way or bowing out that way because I have to cut it if I do. I'm going to make a cigar that's probably you know, a Churchill size or a little shorter, but I'm going to fill some of these gaps with the third piece of that leaf. I'm going to take a third piece, and I'm just going to pull it apart from the vein. The vein's not that thick that i got to worry about it. And I'm going to fill those holes, those gaps, with this. So i got a solid area in here that I can work with. Okay, now it looks a little narrow for rolling, but I'm going to expand that out as I go. So that's the... Um, Nicaraguan Seiko from the Jalapa, that starts with a J, Jalapa region. And this is the um, AIDS Brazilian Habano Viso. So this is a Habano seed. And you can see that, you know, naturally curing, it's curing out pretty nice and dark, right? So again, I'm not going to use the leaf as a whole. I'm going to split it. You can cut it if you want. I just tear them. I'm going to smoke it anyways. It doesn't matter whether it's got a straight edge or not, right? And I'm going to start up here, and I'm just going to kind of expand. In fact, I'll flip it over so it's got a straight edge. Just kind of make that rectangle a little bit bigger, right? Again, I'm just going to pull that vein out. Not because it's bad, but because of the way I'm situating this tobacco on here. I don't want it sticking out. Just going to lay it down there like that. Get me another leaf here. So I'm going to use two leaves. This is a very strong tobacco. I don't want to go, and you see, look how dark that is. I don't want to go, you know, too wild with uh, the strength. Even though these are small leaves, you could easily put three of them in there. I'm just going to go two. So, again, I'm just kind of rolling this down, spreading it out. Don't need the vein in there. Again, it wouldn't hurt if it was in there, but I just, you know, you don't want them hitting your tongue and whatnot. It's nice to have a nice, smooth fill. I'll just throw it there in the middle. Okay. Now, so I've got Viso in the middle, not on the bottom. I got the Seiko on the bottom. Usually it'd be Viso Seiko. I got Seiko Viso because of the way the tobacco rolls. Now, this is aged Nicaraguan Lajero uh, from the Jalapa region, also. This particular bunch came in super dark and really small. But look how dark that leaf is compared to the rest. That's the dark thing you see when you clip the end of your cigar and you see that dark spot, you're seeing the Lajero, right? Now, I do like a strong cigar, and so I'm going to use, this is, this is a little leaves, I'm going to use two, and I'm just going to use them whole, right? So I'm going to do it like I did before, the arrows pointing towards each other so the fat ends are out. Find me a similar leaf here. Right? So the arrows are pointing to each other. Alright, so that's my book. That's like pages. You lay in one page on top of the other. 
Now I want to square the edges off now and I'm going to clip them again. But I'm going to come in here and you'll see there's kind of a ragged area here and I want to get rid of that and kind of have a nice solid line of tobacco. So I'm just going to come through here and clip it like that. Same on this side, got a raggedy area out here, kind of find a midsection. Clip it like that. Okay, now look at that. We've got a nice, it's a form of a cigar in regards to the width and you know, you can tell when you roll it up, it's gonna be a nice looking cigar. The issue is, is because these points come like this on both sides, on the edge, there's less tobacco than there is in the middle. And when you roll this up, it'll end up looking like a figurato. It'll be kind of skinny on the ends and fat in the middle. Now, you can make it on purpose that way if you want, but typically, you want it to be the same ring gauge all the way through. So we take this cut-off tobacco, and we just fit it in here on the edges. Take this side put it over here. You know, just kind of fit it on the edges. Find this stuff over here. Doesn't matter what shape it is. Just you kind of fill in the edges a little bit with this being thinner in the middle. You know, you take those, tear those edges off. So that gives a little more fatness on the edges. And uh, maybe take a piece of this nice dark Lajero and just stick it in the middle. So when I get to the middle of my smoke, that thing is really cranking. And I tell you what, these crank. These will wake you up. You got to be a pro smoking these, this blend, all right? So that's the book. Now I got to lay out my uh, binder first and again you'll see the the thing with these tobacco leaves is the outside edges like to really wrinkle up and kind of roll up on themselves you don't want that in the binder because it gets a really ugly line going in the roll which is hard to hide with the wrapper so you want this to treat it almost like a wrapper kind of get it as flat as you can I'm really gently doing this it looks like I'm doing it hard but I'm not I've been doing it so long I just have the right pressure to practice and again this is a dry leaf but it's still supple because it has enough moisture see but it's dry it's dry enough to smoke now see I just pulled that off a little bit there shouldn't do that so like I said I like doing the back side first and I'm gonna roll like this to this now this is a relatively wide cigar this would cover this cigar with one exception this is a very thin leaf very thin and so it would have a tendency as I'm trying to keep this tight in the roll to every once in a while break a little bit. So I'm going to use the other half and do a double binder, which is very typical. You'll find a lot of manufacturers, whoops, see, it's a little dry there. I pulled too hard. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will use a double binder, mostly because the binders are crap. They got holes and tears and whatever, you know, in there. So, uh, I'm rolling this out. Now, I can't face it the same way as the other one because if I face it with the bottom down, my lines are going this way. The lines are going this way on this one. So I got to flip it over. Now the lines are both going the same way. And the cigar is not going to be, you know, the binder isn't going to be all one color because it's going to, you know, have front and back on both sides. Anyways, I've overlapped it, but I've let some distance. I wanted it to be a little bit long for my roll, okay? It doesn't have to be that long, I just like it that way so that I got plenty to work with. Now this booking, you gotta start rolling from this end and if your tobacco is too dry, it'll just crumble under your hands. My tobacco, well the hair is a little bit dry, but the rest of it's enough that it'll take the roll. And when you start, a lot of times what they'll do is just kind of fold that middle over to get the roll started, right? And then you come out here to the edge and kind of roll it or, you know, flip it over a little bit. And then you start, rolling with your fingers on all all the whole length of the roll all the way across roll it as tight as you can get without crushing the tobacco as you can see it's kind of holding together I'll shut up and you can hear it crackle hear that crackle so I'm rolling this up I'm keeping it relatively tight all right so there's my filler all right it's the shape of a cigar it's loose. If you tried to draw on this, it'd be like breathing through an open straw right now. I'm going to tighten it up with this. I'm going to squeeze this thing tight as I roll this. I'm going to first start by wrapping this end, right? And I'm pinching down, I'm pinching this thing together as I roll it. Okay? So I'm pinching, I'm pinching, I'm, I'm moving out because the area I pinched is already wrapped. I'm continuing to move out and pinching. Pinching, 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 
feel it back here. It's a little loose here, but it's pinched in here. Pinching. I keep pinching all the way out to the edge as I roll. Okay. Now when I get out to the end, I'm going to be cutting this off a little bit because there's not a whole lot of back on that end. I'm going to go ahead and I like to glue my binder so I can do a little work on it after I bound it. Now there's two binders in here, so one of them might come loose and I have to bind it. But anyway, so I'm going to come back. I'm going to feel my way back until I feel like a nice hard spot. I'm going to cut that off. Same on this side, real loose right there, but hit a hard spot. Boom. Then I'm going to work it a little bit like this. What I'm doing is, is I'm moving the tobacco around inside the binder so that it gets pretty much the same ring gauge all the way across. I had a little one end, one end was a little shallow. And I'm rolling it in the direction of the binder roll so it doesn't unroll itself, right? So. That is the rough, the rough uh, cigar right there. Nice and firm. Got a nice draw, perfect draw on it. I do a little draw testing before I put the wrapper on it. Okay, so I want to clean this off. And because there's some stuff from the tobacco and my sweat and everything else, I'm going to wipe it, excuse me, wipe it down because I want to do the wrapper. Got some rags here. Some people actually miss their rolling table, the rolling slate. So when their wrapper's on there and they spread it out, it stays spread out. I don't do that because it adds too much moisture to the wrapper. It's got to dry too long for me to smoke it because a lot of times I'll make these now and smoke them right away, which I will I'll light this one up when I'm done. <clears throat> so I've got a couple wrappers that I use a lot of, and I'm out of that one. One I like a lot is this. Ecuadorian Shade Lajero wrapper, which means it came from the highest point of the plant, but it was under shade cloth. I've got a lot pre-cut here, and this is a huge wrapper leaf, actually. I'll take a smaller one like that. All right, these are pre-moisturized. I, I gave you the information about how to do that. And listen to our helicopters in the background. You hear that? We get those all night long because we're right on Pendleton Air Force Base, or uh, Naval Base, Naval and Marines, both of them. Anywho, so this has already been cut. This is a lot more tender than that binder was, so i got to be real careful when I pull this out to get those edges to come out. I'm going to cut them off, though. I'm going to cut that roll off, but I want it to be as wide as it is it can be before I make that cut. So I'm going through and stretching this out by hand very carefully. It looks like I'm pulling hard, but I am not pulling hard. Again, it's got a front side, nice and dark, back side a little bit lighter. So I'm going to cut from the back side. And what I want to do is I want to get a straight edge, not straight like a line. It's going to be a little bit curved, but I want it to be flat, straight, not all this ridgy stuff. Because this is the line of the wrapper that you see on the outside of the cigar, this outside edge here. Not the stem side. This will be inside. This will be, on, this will be the line that you see as the cigar gets wrapped. So... I don't need this little tail here. I cut that out of there. I start about a quarter inch, half inch in, and follow the contour around. I'm stretching a little bit, because if you don't, you'll get a little, little um, zits on it, little points. So, okay, so, so that's good. Now there's some issues there. I got a little, little uh, jagged piece there, so I want to cut that out so it Got a nice roll. Oops. Got to fall all the way through. There we go. That's better. And I don't like this edge. It doesn't matter. But just for me, I like coming in here about a couple inches up, straightening that bad boy out too. Sometimes the veins are a little thicker towards the middle vein, and they curl up, they crimp up. They don't look good on the outside of the cigar like that. Depends on how thick the leaf is. Okay, so here's my wrap. Now, again, which side do you, I mean, which end do you start from? I'm going to roll this way because I'm going to start with the smoking end of my cigar here. I'm going to roll to the butt end of my cigar. And so as I'm rolling, 
my cigars going up here, the wrapper's going this way, this is going to be the outside edge that I see when I'm holding the smoke. And that, if you can see here, you can see the, the turn of the tobacco, that's what you're going to see right here. So I want that, so I'm going to start this cigar, this, this, so that when I roll it, the vein and the cigar are going to be in line with each other, right, the vein. So when I'm looking at that, I'm positioning my cigar down here so that it's going to match up with those veins when I roll it up, okay? Start with a little glue at the end. Most people don't. Again, I'm it. Bad, bad juju. Pushed a little hard. That's how tender some of this wrapper can be. I just put enough in here to help it grab the very beginning. That's probably more than a lot of... I know some people actually glue the whole wrapper. But you can't stretch it when you do that because there's glue all over it. So, here we are. My veins are going this way. I'm kind of going to put the veins so they're like this on the table, so that when I lay my cigar like this, they're lined up with the veins. I'm going to start back off away so that as I roll, I get the whole end covered. If you start up here, as you roll, part of the inside of the binder is going to show because it's not going to cover, so you got to start back a little bit. And without worrying about what that first part looks like because it's going to get covered, except it is sticking up there. Once I got that started, now I know it's going to line up with all those veins. I can turn this to work with, and I'm going to stretch with my thumb and my forefinger and pull the cigar away from the wrapper a little bit so it's tight. And every once in a while, I'm going to pull back and roll. Pull back and roll. Okay. I'm making sure those veins don't get crimped up in there. Keeping it nice and tight. When I get close to the end, I'm going to put some more glue on here right on the outside edge. We don't need it everywhere. All right. Roll that out, roll that up. Okay, now that's a, you know, it's a little bumpy because I don't have a, a press. What the press does is take those bumps out, right? So the bumps are from the binder and the roughness it had. The binder had a little roughness because of the fill inside of it, and the mold will take that out. But when you're smoking a cigar, you don't care, really, honestly. You care about the draw and the flavor, so that's all I worry about. So. Anywho, this is my lighting end. So this is where the scissors come in because I don't have one of those, you know, cigar clippers. So I come in here and I kind of cut off that excess, right? And I just trim into it a little bit because there's some flayed edges, right? And this is the smoking end. And because I don't have a press to make any shapes, I'm not putting a cap on this. I can put a cap on this. And if I did put a cap, I would have left a little less tobacco on this end. I would have cut off, you know, above about half inch, and I would have kind of pressed that together and pushed that down in it, and then I would have cut out a, a um, piece of uh, wrapper that was long, maybe about three or four inches long, and come in here and kind of bind it up, and then cut me out a cap and put the cap on there, and it would have been a closed end. I'm going to cut it anyways. These are my cigars. I'm not selling them. I'm not giving them to anybody usually. So I don't care that I have a cap. So I'm back in here, I'm just going here, clipping that in back, All right? And then uh, find where the roll is on that. Actually, that's pretty good. Just give it a couple of these. And there's your cigar. That's a smokable cigar right there. Okay, see that? Got a little bit of the there, I'll take that off. If you look on the end there, you can see where my Lajero is. Now, if you want the Lajero dead in the center, when you're laying out your book, I'm going to say this rag is your book, and you're about to put the Lajero in, then you want the Lajero right on this edge, all of it, right here. Because as you're rolling that up, that becomes the center of the cigar. No matter how much you roll here, that's always going to be the center, right down the middle. So if you want that Lajero to be right dead center, then you got to stack it all on the edge. I don't care. Again, if I was making it for somebody who did care, I'd make it that way. I can, but I'm not in the business for making it for, for people right now. So, anywho, so that's the cigar. Um, I'm going to go get a lighter and light it up and show you what it's like. And then I'm going to cut this video and send it off to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. By the way, you, you want to get, you know... Um, 
demineralized water because the minerals can build up on the tobacco, especially when you're wetting down tobacco. And that's another thing I'm going to show you real quick. When you get your tobacco in and it's dry, and I'm just going to use this as an example. This is that Brazilian filler, the Viso. <clears throat> you don't want to try to open these up when they're dry because they'll, they'll crack more. So what you can do is you take this. All you got to do is go down about like that, just like that. Let me do that again where you see it in the camera. Just boop, boop, right? Stack that on there. Boop, boop, stack that on there. And so you'll do about eight of those and then stick them in a plastic bag. You know, close the bag off. Doesn't have to be airtight. Set, her aside, set it aside somewhere so that the moisture can draw into the tobacco. And 24 hours is plenty of time. Actually, you can do it in an hour or two, but I like to give it so it gets all through the tobacco. One side will actually soak through all of this because this side's wet, this is dry. I set it on there, now they're both wet. You don't want to put too much water because then it becomes too tender and it's hard to pull apart without tearing. Okay, so when this, when this tenders up, if I want to use this for a wrapper or binder, or if you're going to use a bunching method, which you're taking your leaf and you're kind of rolling it into a tube like this, right, the tube method, you want it to be supple enough that you can do that without it breaking apart. And some of your tobacco won't be that supple. And so you would roll several of these tubes together and put them together and then bind them. That's how Fuente does their cigars, is the tube method. You know, I'm lazy. I can do this. It's a lot more work. I mean, it wouldn't be if you did it all the time, but booking is just easier for me. So I just chose the booking life. And the booking is the Cuban way of making cigars, by the way. So that's that. All right, so I'm going to get a lighter, and I'll be right back. Lots of good smoke. I'm used to this blend, so it tastes good to me. I will say it's best to leave these alone for a month or two. Once you introduce moisture to some of the tobacco, or if it still has a little moisture, it still has a tendency to continue to ferment, which releases whatever ammonia is left in the leaf. That can give it a little bit of a bitter taste. And sometimes I catch that, like in the wrapper that's got a little bit of moisture, catching that acidic taste a little bit in there. But I don't mind it. If I want a cigar now, I can make one now and smoke it now. But if you can make several and try one out right away to see how you like the blend, it's going to taste different in a month or two, but not radically different. And something I found also that's interesting is that the tobacco tastes, the smoke of the tobacco tastes like the raw tobacco smells a lot of times. You smell your tobacco. And in particular, when you, like with the wrapper or binder, if you moisten it a little bit and then put it in one of these, leave it sit for a few days, go back open, it's fermenting a little bit, and man, if it smells great in that process, the ammonia's gone, and it's going to taste just like that smell. So that helps you a little bit on blending your cigars when you're trying to figure out what kind of tobacco you want to put in to get what kind of flavor you want. It also has to do with how much of each tobacco. For instance, Cameroon has a very distinct taste. I like it a lot. That's why I like Don Carlos. That's why I like Hemingway. Um, with Cameroon, however, if you put too much in it because you like it, it's too much. It doesn't taste as good. It's better to be uh, not the overwhelming flavor, but the hint. Same with Lajero. Sometimes a little goes a long way. So what I try to do in experimenting, and you'll get this way once you finally start buying more tobacco, is I'll make a cigar without any Lajero. I'll say I want to have, you know, Nicaragua, Nicaraguan filler, maybe an Ecuadorian or a Dominican binder, uh, whatever wrapper I want. I'll make that cigar and smoke it. And I'll say, you know, I kind of like that flavor, but it needs punched up. I need something to really kind of put the pepper on it or whatever. And then I say to myself, it doesn't need a lot or it needs a lot. So I'll go back and make that blend again, same way, same amount, this time adding however much Lajero I think it should have. And uh, make the cigar, smoke it. And it takes a month or two working out a blend or two because you got to give, you know, the cigars time to grow on you and to, you know, 
uh, age a little bit. Aging is relative. We're talking weeks here, not years. Um, but it's just an experimenting process. You'll probably smoke every cigar you make, even if you don't like it, because you made it. I rarely put one down that I thought, wow, that was a bad, that was a bad blend. But I also, I got a buck fifty in it that I don't want to throw away. So uh, I'll smoke most of it. Sometimes I'll put it down halfway. Anyways, everybody's got their own taste. I can tell you that uh, usually Dominican uh, tobaccos are lighter flavored, but they are tobaccos that can add flavor to a cigar. They're not absent flavor, they're just not really strong. Uh, obviously, Nicaraguan is your strongest. That's the pepper, pepper, pepper. That's the, the punch. And almost every blend. In fact, the um, Viso uh, Nicaraguan from the Jalapa region is almost as strong as the Lajero. And you have to be careful when you blend those two together because it can, it's like a triple Lajero from somebody. Um, the uh, wrapper doesn't add as much flavor as you would think because it's half a leaf. And usually you have a couple of leaves of each. You know, this is probably a 50, I want to say 54, 56 ring gauge. And this has got uh, five, six, seven filler leaves, right? You saw me put three of the Seiko and two of the Viso and three of the, or three of the Viso and two of the um, Lajero. Now they were small leaves and still got this size of cigar. And then it's got a half a leaf. Well, I had two leaves, so a full leaf of binder and half a leaf of wrapper. So um, the, the more the tobacco in it, the more it's going to affect the flavor. So if you're going to experiment with Cameroon and you don't have Cameroon grade that you can bind or wrap with, it's going to be a filler. You want to be careful that you don't put three leaves of Cameroon in there because it may be too much Cameroon. And too much of something is never good. Anyways, this burns fine. I just rolled it. The moistest thing that was in this was the wrapper, and you saw how limber and you know it was a little bit wet but not wet wet all the other tobacco was just moist enough and moist really isn't the word it just has enough moisture content that it didn't break when i bent it and that's the key if your tobacco is crumbling when you try to bend it or fold it it's too dry what you can do a lot of times when you buy in the future if you buy let me hold on a second here's a two pound bag okay you could open up that bag Go and spray some water inside the bag. Just mist it around the outside edge. Bind it back up. And that whole bunch will begin to absorb that moisture. And at least the outside leaves will be supple. You want all your leaves to be supple enough that they're not breaking into pieces when you work with it. You want them to be dry enough that the cigar will dry out in a reasonable amount of time so you can smoke it, which is one of two reasons why they age cigars after they roll them. One is to get the moisture content down to a normal level. And also, because that moisture content is outgassing, it's taking ammonia out with it, they want it to go through that process until the ammonia is completely gone. So, anyway, bro, have at it. It's fun to do. And, you know, after a while, you might get tired of your own cigars, so you got to go throw in a few Opus and... Don Carlos and whatnot, but you always come back to them because they're yours. Happy smoking.